When Dr. Morbius meets Doctor Who, it's Morbin time! We saw Morbius, so you know what that means. the Chicago Theater, and we are so excited to talk about a movie <laughs> that changed a generation. Some say it might be the best Marvel affiliated film ever. <laughs> Technically not a Marvel film, because I've never seen that weird title above Marvel before in association. It's like we live next door to Marvel. But if you need to know the plot of Morbius, it's uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Vampire. I don't know, it's, it's a weird story about a man who doesn't have the right DNA, but vampire bats do. I think we learned a lot of bad things about vampire bats that aren't true. And if you're looking for something scary, don't worry, you won't find it here. Surprisingly, in the t hour and 48 minutes, of this film, not much happens, but we are gonna break it down tonight with my co-host, please welcome Mr. Jason Manzuki! What's up, drugs? Morbius? <laughs> Question mark? We definitely watched Morbius. That is a true statement. Yesterday you said something that, that I, I will say I put into effect today, which yeah. is you admitted that you watch some things yes. at a faster speed. 100%. And I was like, yikes, that sounds like a great idea. So I started doing it on Morbius Got earlier it. today. Yeah. Okay. There's so much slow-mo in this movie that I was like, what's going on? Because sometimes it would be like normal and then sometimes it would be like And then I tried to mess with it and inadvertently I watched like 15 minutes of the movie at 0.75. I, wa I made it longer! I watched this movie for longer than you did! I don't understand why you can go below the normal speed because if you really want to drink it in occasionally i will make that mistake in an audio book and i'm like come on get to the point and then i realize it's my mistake um but no i watch this in real speed i don't for how did this get made i don't fuck around i watch it in the right aspect ratio i rent out a theater i sit there by myself <laughs> I do all the research. No, uh, I watch these all in the real speed. But you know what? I was upset because I love watching Marvel movies. I love those films. And I know I only have a few chances to get June on board with those. Ugh. And this is where I wasted that. But let's, let's hear it from her. Please look at my co-other co-host, June Day and Review. Yeah. Welcome, June. Hi, Paul. How are you? I'm well. Thank you. How are you? Good. I love this movie. <laughs> wow. What? What on earth is happening? I enjoyed That's it. it. Black it out. Show's over. I enjoyed it quite a bit. 
It was weird the final episode of the How Did This Get Made podcast was only <laughs> one and a half minutes long. Chicago saw historic podcast sh- in the making. Sh- June had a take so hot, we had to wrap the podcast. But you know what? I'm happy to hear you say that. And I will say, I don't know if, if it's the fact that we've been on tour and we've watched so many bad movies. Yeah, we're it, not well. Yeah. Oh, I mean, if we're going to compare this to Oogie Loves. <laughs> this one went down <laughs> easy. So easy. Yes, I, I, I do agree with that. So Morbius is a, you know, is a grand film. You know, it spans a quarter of a century. You know, we're, we're following these characters from 25 years ago all the way to the present. I mean, I just love, Jason, as a comic book fan, uh, you know, I think that you probably feel like I've what? I've been waiting, waiting for Morbius the Living Vampire to enter our cinematic universe. And the- I haven't been. This is a character I don't care about. <laughs> Morbius so- the Living Vampire is like a also ran Spider-Man kind of... Uh, Good guy, bad guy, kind of in that category that I'm not. I'm not even that familiar with. I mean, he's part daredevil, right? Yes, all the echolocation stuff, all that. I can hear everything. He's part Spider-Man, which we kind of address because he got bit or he has put the blood in, whatever. And then I would say this movie makes him mostly Batman. Like the yeah. fact that he doesn't call himself wow. Batman upset me. Like <laughs> you are using bats to attack. Don't just use your doctor name. Like, <laughs> it's his real name. <laughs> his, yeah, well, it, but I would never, I would never go to a doctor whose last name was Morbius. Yeah. Like that. Never. But see, approaching the movie with no knowledge, because I think I asked you, Paul, at one point, is this Batman? Yeah. And you am, said. Am I, watching, am I watching Batman? Yeah, is this sort of another version, like another kind of take on Batman's origin story and... I don't know much about any of these gentlemen, Batman, Spider-Man, but Batman's origin story, like, I do know. Yeah, so I which thought, is? Well, he sees his parents get slaughtered in an alley. Okay, great, yeah. wow, okay. Do you? Yeah, I do know that, I know that. But I was like, but if you, co- I, and I would recommend another viewing, erasing all of the comics you've read and just approaching it anew. But don't do it like this, just, erasing. <laughs> Erasing all the comics, comics you read, boy. And just approaching it like it's a brand new thing. Yeah. Um, and you might enjoy it. Paul, you did enjoy this movie, by I the way. I said I enjoyed it. Okay. I was surprised. Look, is it a good movie? No. But <laughs> it is competently made in parts. But... Also, nothing happens. Like, it's a weird I mean, thing. It's like th- a perfect rainy day movie to watch on, like, a channel that plays, like, mostly, like, two and a half men reruns. Like, like it's Wait, like, well, what, that's the only channel they get. What channel is that? And are you watching it? <laughs> I mean, isn't that what TBS, TBS is now? I yeah. mean, TBS is pretty much that. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Two and a half men and Morbius? Morbius? I could see Morbius it. Morbius posits a world in which you want to know what the coolest thing is? In 2022, bullet time. We did this already. We did. I could see the bullet coming and dodge it. That's the Matrix. Come to on. Me, to me, the best thing about Morbius simply was his doctor's outfit, which looked like a, a very high-class chef outfit. Like, I've never <laughs> seen a doctor that has, like, a button around the neck. He looked like a priest, <laughs> doctor, chef. Well, I, I was so obsessed with um, his lab because they're do, they are doing clinical trials there for at least one patient, Anna. Yeah. She's in there. Anna is in there, and I guess maybe still currently in a coma? My assumption, my assumption it's- is... We'll be in a coma uh, for forever. Of, no, Wait. I, it's really tough because I spent the entire movie and the two post credit scenes thinking, when will we take this vial to Anna? Or wake her up? Well, this is interesting because I forgot a big part of this movie. There is a moment where the king of Sweden gives him an award, right? The Nobel yeah. Prize. The Nobel Prize. So he gets the Nobel Prize. Wait, does for- he get the Nobel Prize? Yes! He created artificial blood. Of course he did. Uh, you know what? I think it was happening so slow on my screen <laughs> that I wasn't processing right. it. I you was... couldn't help but to miss it at that point. It is said so quickly because it's just a quick cut to it. It's like, 
Uh, Nobel Prize. Anyway, we're back in the lab. We're like, wait, wait, huh? Well, we then- just traversed 25 years. Then we go forward to synthetic blood, and then we're back in. Like, there's so much going on. But synthetic blood seems like, isn't that healing him? Isn't that working? Well, but it's for s- shorter and shorter periods until only so- oh, go ahead. after he got bit by the vampire bat. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, right. I think he's looking for a cure. Like a full-blown cure, and I don't think synthetic blood is it. So that's like insulin for him. He's like, it's not yeah. curing it. I have to do so I have do to you get think more the, drastic. The thing that's tricky is I believe, and I'm sure someone's going to shout it out, but I believe that that artificial blood is impacting the world in, an, in a huge way, right? That Tyrese yes, says Tyrese later says on it, yes, that it exactly. saved him in the battlefield. Guys, Tyrese is in this fucking movie. And doing movie. great work. And great thank work. God. When Tyrese showed up, I I wrote, thank God Tyrese is here. (sighs) And then when Tyrese ceases to be funny, I'm like, oh no, why Tyrese? Why did they take the funny guy? All I wanted was for him to be his character from Fast and Furious. Yeah, he's like, are you telling me you got (laughs) vampire blood in your body? (laughs) Like, no, he's just dead serious. But in the trailer or one of the trailers, there's multiple trailers with extra scenes. Tyrese does take off a jacket and reveal a robotic arm. Okay. Uh, uh, Oh. Okay. The balcony needs to chill out. I know that's hard because you're in the balcony and you're already, most of you, pissing your pants. But yes, like Tyrese's character, there are multiple reshoots here. Yeah. Tyrese's character uh, did have a robotic arm, so I feel like they also were trying to show something there, which makes sense because when Tyrese is chasing Dr. Morbius, and I'll call him by his doctor name, Dr. Morbius, um, he manages to, I call to him get, Mike. He manages to <laughs> get to the top of the building as quick as Morbius, and Morbius did like, like Morbius like flew up there. Oh, bouncing off walls and Tyrese got up there real quick with the, the wind. What happened with the wind? Oh my okay. gosh. What is that wind? I <sighs> In the subway tunnel as well. I get the subway tunnel because I feel like that's the subway tunnel pushing the wind forward. I agree but with I you there. I think that also happens. But it happens on a rooftop. And I, I, I thought it was just a windy day. And... <laughs> And no, no, I, I once you're up there, I think what was happening was, you know, he's constantly trying to Morbius, trying to understand what his body can do. Like what now his that power set is. Yes. What his power set is, because he's adjusting to this is where I like the movie. He's adjusting to not only being, you know, out of the prison of his illness, but and being and feeling good, but actually feeling like more than good, which is superhero level. Now, where I think there was a missed opportunity. He's feeling more than good. What'd you say? He's feeling more than good. <laughs> I think he, I thought where we were going is that he so you're was saying going more to. Been good? More than good. Got it. Got it. I wish we had seen him think he was a superhero or had superpowers before he actually did because he spent his life afflicted by a very serious illness oh, i see so you th- you would have wait thought he had superpowers or just was healthy superpowers made, he well he doesn't have a barometer made himself for healthy. what it feels like to be healthy ever that's what i'm that's what i'm saying i would yeah. have loved it if we had a scene where he's like i did it i'm healthy i live in the real world before he like turns into like a blood-sucking vampire and murders a bunch of people. Either way, I just think that was such a... Because the heart of the story, I actually think, is really compelling. They just didn't really do anything with it. (laughs) You know, but I think what was happening with the wind... Anyway, to go back to the wind on the rooftop, I think what was happening was that it was simply just a windy day, and we were watching... I, a man with I superpowers, think, like, brace himself to not get thrown off by the wind. I think what it is, it, and I, I think this is what it is, but I don't think it's successful or I think it's too confusing. I think what it is is he now, one of the, one of the elements of his power set now is that he can fly. And he yet doesn't know it, 
but his body is processing air currents everywhere. Well, can I tell you why? So that, yeah, so that he can fly because bats are blind and they fly off of the air is what I'm okay, assuming. I thought, oh, I thought that when he has this blood, he gets hollow bones. Like sorry, a bat. Paul, we didn't get that. Can you what? repeat it? I thought, I'm so sorry. What now? What's I that believe. Now? And scientists in the audience, I know there's a lot, back me up. I believe you that vampire... Ba- you think scientists are in the balcony? <laughs> On a Sunday night? If you're a scientist and you're in the balcony, <laughs> you're not a scientist. <laughs> I believe that vampire bats, or bats in general, have hollow bones. That's Am I right? And birds. Birds have hollow bones. Birds. Same bird difference. Bones. Well, Birdman is in this. Yes. Yeah. Well, Wait, I so think you we... thought that the wind was because his bones were now hollow? Yeah, because he's lighter. Oh, but I, well, then we're kind of saying the same thing because I don't think it's that he's, <laughs> wouldn't it have been amazing if he took, if he gets bitten by the vampire and of all the transformations you see, you watch the marrow get sucked out of all of his bones. <laughs> that's, what's, that's what's trailing him whenever he jumps up. That's bone marrow. That's bone marrow. <laughs> No, I think it's his... I think he is... Oh, oh, look. Because bat bones are hollow, allowing them to be light enough to fly, they're unable to produce the B cells needed for immune function in their bone marrow like other mammals. Oh, so they're, 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 they're unable to combat viruses. Yes. Okay, so now I have a new set of problems. <laughs> Without that marrow, baby, they are prone to viruses. This guy is riddled with virus. No, my thing is, I think the first time on the rooftop it happens, the wind is blowing, it's just the wind, but they're visualizing it because he's like, what the fuck is this wind? The same way they're trying to visualize, I can hear across town, they're trying to visualize all of these bat specifics, these bat senses. I also think that his hearing is bullshit because he seems to selectively cancel out the entire city. Yeah. Unless it's like, oh, I can hear down the hall in this one minute. Like, the nurse is killed. What happened to the nurse? Why oh, yeah. she was killed? Oh, shit, what happened? Like, you would think he couldn't sleep because the noise would be like And we, he never, nothing. The thing that happens that we, what's wonderful about Daredevil's powers when he gets them as a child is that when he loses his sight and all of his other senses uh, because he gets uh, toxic waste dumped on him um, and all of his other senses heighten, he's almost driven insane by the amount of input he's now getting. He can hear, it's a cacophony of sounds that he cannot control. We never see Morbius struggle with his body. He is like, wait, I can fly, I can do anything, I'm awesome, I'm immediately incredible at this. Done, I'm Leto, get to work. You need me to be jacked Leto? Okay, I need to be skinny in one scene, and then I'm full-blown jacked Leto. He carry me around set, but I'm jacked. I loved it. He literally plays one game of handball, just one, and he's got it, figured it out, got my powers down. Like, he, he nails it He's right not even playing that. a game, he's just tossing a ball. Yeah. And he's like, hmm, can I do this? Yep, I guess I'm a fucking cool-ass <laughs> vampire. <laughs> but not the kind that's not cool with the sun. Well, the, the big issue that I had in the beginning was his love interest, Martine. You know, she mm-hmm. comes in, and it feels like she's catching him in the act. She's like, what are you doing? And then proceeds to knock on a giant tube in the middle of his office full of bats. He's not hiding the bat work. <laughs> like, she presents like, I know you're working on something secretive. Tink, tink, tink. You know what there should have been? There should have been an administrator, somebody who was like, I don't like these bats in here. I don't like what you're up to. I don't like your long hair. I don't like your too trimmed, too dark beard. For someone your age, there's definitely gray in there. You are not a doctor, sir. You are Jared Leto. (laughs) I will say this. Jared Leto did say he did not have to do method acting for this role because, oh, no. because, and this is a true quote, Dr. Morbius and him share a similar personality. Okay, that's really interesting because 
one of the reasons why I really love this movie, obviously, is because of Jared Leto, but also I found him to be so watchable and easy on screen. I loved him in this. I loved him. Oh, I think I, and I mean, I I thought Jared Leto was fine, but to me, Matt Smith is absolutely devouring this movie. This Um, is the performance. Matt Smith is where I'm at. Okay, hold on one second. Give me an entire movie about Matt Smith. No. Stat. Stat. That's a medical term. Hold on. All you Doctor Who nerds, take that out of the equation. Yeah, Doctor Who, yay! He just started watching it. I just started killing Christopher Eccleston. (laughs) Matt Smith has no reason. He has nothing. Why does he all of a sudden be like, yeah, let's fucking kill everybody? Like, he, the synthetic blood is working for him, and he's like, fuck it, now I want to eat people. Okay. Like, he has no, he's like, yeah, we can cover up dead bodies, that's easy. Because like, I think really? uh, <laughs> what the movie is going for, or one, of, one, one thing that's coming through is how we treat disabled people okay. and people who are, I'm serious. And so I did, I did feel like, oh, I, I do understand that the the world has not been set up or adjustments have not been made for someone like Matt Smith to live with his illness successfully in the world. We and see him get bullied and beat bullied up as, as a, a child. child and but then he's, he's hiring bodyguards because he's like yes, ripping off the mob. Yes, but one of his bodyguards also refers to Dr. Morbius as a cripple when he's letting him into Matt Smith's apartment. Okay. So I do think what's happening to Matt Smith is that he can no longer take being disabled in America. Got it. And so and he I, wants to eat them and drink or, their blood. Or in the world. Or in the, or world, in the world. Because I'm pretty or sure he's first I- treated Wait. in Greece. <laughs> and I was like, hey, I wrote, hang on. Is anybody Greek in this? Is, is somebody in this movie supposed to be Greek? But, <laughs> wait, am I, is Jared Harris supposed to be Greek? Is, this, is the clinic Greek? Is Morbius Greek? Is, Matt, is anybody supposed to be Greece? Greek? Why is this is Isn't clinic? Morbius a Greek name? Yes, of course. <laughs> Dimitri Morbius. <laughs> hey, Morbius. We got it, Morbius. Galakisi? <laughs> I think it was during a time where it was like Mediterranean air can cure anything. I feel like Jared Leto was like, I want to go to Greece for this. <laughs> but just for one scene. Um, here's my question, though, and, and I'm asking this very honestly uh, because the movie leaves a lot to the viewer to connect dots. Um, but Matt Smith is doing well with the synthetic blood. Well, listen, even though they're, they're surviving on the synthetic blood, there's nothing like the red stuff. Also... You know, we know that. There's all, nothing yeah. like that red stuff. He's, he wants to eat dinner at a red sauce place, if you know <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> Here's the thing, and we, and, and we understand why, and I, I, I think that for, for, for Jared Leto, for Morbius, he is doggedly pursuing a cure. He is chasing, he is a scientist, he is a doctor, he is chasing a cure. Matt Smith's want is to dance. <laughs> he cannot dance. You know what he's not doing with synthetic blood? Dancing. The he, guy needs to move. I mean, they really do recreate that scene from Spider-Man 3 with Tobey Maguire there. That's true. <laughs> I just, I wish we, I wish we knew more about Anna's parents. And... <laughs> Just what kind of waivers they had to sign to get her treatment and to get her a spot in this clinical trial Anna's, at New Horizons. Do you think Anna's parents were ever like by her bedside, like, oh, Anna, okay, okay. And then we're like, okay, we're leaving now. Walk past giant plexiglass full of bats. Well, like that Do you was, think they're ever like, what is this treatment? Should even, we take her to a regular by hospital? By the way, even if, even if they had never seen the bats, the lighting in that facility. Okay. Nah. Okay, not only nah. the lighting in the facility, the lighting in the facility ha- is on the same timer system as episode one of Guillermo del Toro's um, <laughs> Cabinet, Cabinet of, of Curiosities. Curiosities. <laughs> the Tim Blake Nelson episode where that lighting, that timer-based lighting is in a storage facility. 
This is a high-tech hospital. The nurse is killed and is dead on the floor all night into the next day. Well, to me, what? I thought... To me, I thought it was one of those lights, like, you know, if you stay still in the bathroom too long, the light will go off, and you have to, like, wave your hand. Like, um, but... Oh, those are the worst. I hate it. When you but get to a like certain it. age and you realize, oh, no, I now shit longer than the movement timer. <laughs> this is not good. I'm old. But... How is there still some left? I, I thought... I thought that it was on movement. Just when I thought I was out, it pulls me back in. Okay. But I thought it was on movement lights, but it wasn't because she runs to the end of the hall and then there's a lone light switch that turns on all the lights. It's like, wait, you... That's Those so movement odd. lights. I actually, I thought that I, I enjoyed that sequence. I thought it was very scary. It's a great, it was very, it's a very great scary. device and it is used so much better in the Guillermo del Toro thing. I, but I will say this um, once again, the, the patient, Anna, literally is attached to the laboratory. Like, it does feel like, what other care is she getting there? It, doesn't, like, it seems like people are going well, again, home. That's why I want to know what the situation is, because if you're part of a clinical trial, I do think she needs to be admitted to a hospital. And... I guess the, I mean, to me, Morbius a lab is, is a lab there. and a hospital is a hospital. And Morbius those are two different there. things. Yeah, I know. I know. He puts her into a, the last we see, he's like, nah, put her into a coma. I have a, I have a question. I have a question. <laughs> Never wakes her up. Is, some, is some things, and the mo- it, some of this might just be, the movie is, uh, doesn't answer these questions, but, and some of it might be because I watched it on a bunch of various speeds. <laughs> Um, is Jared, so Jared Harris is running the Greek clinic where boy Morbius meets boy Matt Smith. Okay. Yes. He he then calls him Milo for the rest of the movie. Is it his name Lucian? Yes. Yeah. Right? Yes. So his name is Lucian. It's just this thing where, where Morbius calls everybody Milo and he's like, you don't have an identity except for the one I give you. Your new Milo. But he also then says, I don't even remember the first Milo. So it's like, it's not even in like, oh, I love that Milo and he was taking away. He's like, I don't even remember. But well, I, I, I assume that you two would know the answers to I this. Think he's I, just some information I, think, here. Well, I think he's just saying, you're just another Milo that'll die soon. Who cares? This yes. movie's about me, Morbius, the living vampire. <laughs> And, oh, wait, now because I can, like, now because I fixed your dialysis machine or whatever the machine was with a ballpoint pen, who is he? Forge? That's for the comic book nerds! But, by the way... Forge can make anything. He's a machinist. He can build anything out of anything. Is Morbius the same? What is his mutant power? When Morbius fixes that with a pen uh, spring, uh, Jared Harris is like, you're smart. I'm going to send you to science school. Like, he said, well, here's my question. He right. says there is a school in New York for gifted youngsters, which sounds a lot like Xavier Academy to me. And I was like, are these motherfuckers trying to introduce the X-Men in Morbius? Well, I will straight up kill myself if this is, <laughs> if this is how this happens. Again, if- I didn't take any of this baggage into my viewing. Of and course. I just enjoyed it. But I do feel like at one point, look, he's, like, he calls everybody Milo. But then when he saves Lucian's life, you would think he goes, I'm not going to call you Milo anymore. I'm going to call you Lucian. And then he doesn't. And then so much so that later in the movie, he's like, I got to save Milo. It's like, you don't even know his name. Everybody calls him Milo. I know. Even, um, well, he even, calls himself Milo. And, and other people call him, Bix from Andor calls him Milo. Yeah. Everybody calls him, everybody, his, I swear to God, <laughs> I think Matt Smith's character legally changes his name to Milo just because Jared Leto is like, that's who you are, that's it. I run the cult, you're Milo. <laughs> By the way, uh, speaking of weird things in this movie, and we'll get to a lot of them, there was nothing more unsexy than being off the coast of Long Island. Now, I am a Long Island native. As am I. But 
when they not go me, international, baby. when they say international waters, I'm thinking something very exotic. Was not, not expecting 13 Long miles off the coast of Montauk. <laughs> yeah. Like this. I'm like, you could for sure see a strip mall from there. Yeah. And it was like. International waters. I was like, is I, Don DeMillo here? What's going you know, on? Morbius is, loves his outlet mall shopping. He's like, well, I'll hit the outlets and then you know, we'll get on a. And then we're going to go to Montauk and then we're going to hang out with get Billy a Joel. Roll. You know who I felt really badly for? Well, Anna, of course, but also. Let's, we got to put her in a coma. <laughs> I felt really bad for that crew on that ship. On that cargo ship. The mercenaries. Multiple yeah. times people tell you, don't worry about them. I know. <laughs> like, they're like, I don't care about those Why? guys. Did they, are we sure they all deserved to die? <laughs> well, I, I mean, the movie is trying to tell us they are. But here's my question is, why did he even need mercenaries? Just charter a boat and build a lab in it. Why do you need gun-toting mercenaries? I, I, got I think it's just for you. so. I think it's just so they can be visually bad guys. So you're okay with him killing them. Well, here's my other question for you: Why do they need to be in international waters? Like, what? Why do they need to be on the water? Because he well, tells Milo it's pretty. It's it's full blown illegal what I'm gonna do. So I can only do it in international waters. Yeah, but, it's like the FDA, Fauci's not approving this. Type is, of experiment. Is this the bat that, that brought COVID to the States? <laughs> Morbius? Yes. He's like, he, the first scene takes place at a wet market. <laughs> now, I do love when Morbius is recording his own journal. He goes, I have echolocation. That's bat radar for those uninitiated. You fucking dope. It's your own. <laughs> Get your own journal. Okay, that made me think, is somebody, because to your point, Jason, there, there doesn't seem to be any, like, admin infrastructure at New Horizons. So I was like, where's I, I know Mark. Where's, where's Cuddy from House being like, you can't do this, and, you're out of control. Right, but I was like, I know Martine's not transcribing those notes from the tape, so is Jared Leto transcribing his own notes? I feel like he's doing voice to text. Who, like, is is Anna? Like, is is she? Is this treatment covered by like her PPO? Like, what? Oh, I thought you were gonna say, is it like a work study? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like, I'm like, what? What is is where Jared? I what I think is true is I believed that Jared Leto was operating out of a hospital. And I think he is not. I think he's operating out of like. Oh, Jason, that is not a hospital. No, that's, that's a house. lab in it's like a some lab warehouse a... that's been converted. Right. Oh, wait. Okay. I have issues with the labs because at one point a guy is forging hundred dollar bills. Like that's my new science lab. How? He walks in. He walks How? into a lab. <laughs> he, he walks. He just overhears with his echolocation two guys trying to pass off counterfeit 100s and they're like, all right, we got to get back to the lab. He follows them to their lab where they're manufacturing money and he, <laughs> he tweaks two, three things and is like, yep, now I can do my blood experiments on this. <laughs> it's a printing press. He has a print. He has it's a like machine he's got that, like that a, ink goes <laughs> and he takes out like the ink cartridge. He's like, now it's a blood machine. Now... Now I now now I have my blood. It is absolutely insane that he's and it, it's all it's all it's not even a time jump. I could understand. He gets rid of the guys who are counterfeiting. He says, "Okay, this is raw materials I can use." Time jump. Now he's got it set up. No, immediately he's like, "Screw, screw, 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 screw." <laughs> Perfect, and the thing's like spinning around. They were making money. They, it's like it might as well I, have been. This movie is nonsense. I, I have such an issue with the lack of refrigeration for all this blood oh because my God. unless he has like a Yeti backpack, the the backpack that he throws the blood in we've does not seen, look. It's, we've seen the kind of lab he needs to make it work. Yeah, this is not legit. that. Yeah. It seems like a, I mean, where is the blood? I mean, also the amount of underground layers, like they're, they're going deep. I mean, this is a I weird a question. I did love that the criminals referred to their counterfeit space as a lab. Yes. I was like, wow, they, they bring a certain level of professionalism to their work. <laughs> as I, they're trying to pass off fake 100s at the diner. Also, Morbius, all over the news. All over the Daily Bugle, J. Jonah Jameson is blowing him up. By the way, 
shot scenes for this movie, J. Jonah Jameson. Oh, really? Yes, and then they cut them. That's heartbreaking. That's heartbreaking. Maybe because they didn't want to reveal. That, well, because that, there are issues with the MC. Okay. There's a lot of mistakes. Sure. Yeah. But uh, he's everywhere. He's on the cover of the paper, blah, blah, blah. But he has, he's also not hiding out at all. He's, he, he's hoodless, looking exactly like his incredibly identifiable self with Bix from Andor in a diner being like, well, I'm a vampire now. But not that kind of vampire. Do, 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 do. My issue was, how did he know that he couldn't have animal blood? He's like, I have a thirst for human blood. You didn't even try animal blood. Well, he's also <laughs> in his old place, in his old lab, yeah. there appears to be, there's the blue synthetic blood, then there's row after row of what looks like red human blood. Couldn't he have drank that for weeks? Well, Seems- no, I think only for hours. Well, it's going oh. down. Uh, six hours, four hours, and 22 yeah. minutes. But isn't that only for the synthetic? Yeah. Like, well, oh, yeah, he I take, guess you're right. He doesn't oh, right. take any of the red blood. Well, does He's he need grabbing blood? the blue blood like oh, crazy. Right. He Why also does doesn't he... seem to really suck it out. Like, he seems to just, like, take a slug of the blood... Like, I want to see him, like... A blood slug? Like, I really want... I want, like, when he's in the jail Ooh, cell... Oh, I'd like to take a blood slug from you. Because he's, like... He's, like... I just feel like he's just... Like, hey, you're leaving a lot of blood in there. If I'm needing human blood, I'm going to suck that blood bag dry. I, I'm just gonna. Because it's, like, I, when will I get the next batch? I well, don't know. the other thing is, because he doesn't seem to have... Like, obviously, there are vampiric urges that he has. Yes. Like, when when, sure. uh, when she cuts her hand, when she cuts her, when the cat, is it the cat scratches her or whatever? Yeah. She, she gets a cut and he can, like, he, he, it activates him, right? But, but he also doesn't attack. He only attacks people, uh, uh, he's only out of control, rather, in, on the boat. So why isn't he just getting people to donate blood to him to drink? That seems like uh, he must have. He's a Nobel Prize winning doctor. He has access to blood. And by the way, why are people so mad that he's like at one point when he's on the cover? Like, I knew that guy was a fucking freak. Like, really? The Nobel Prize scientist who invented synthetic blood? You have an issue it's with? Because he has long hair. Vendor? I mean, I do think it's a hard sell because I I think it's wonderful to donate blood. I try to donate blood, but it's like, I don't know that I want to donate blood for someone to drink. Well, I would, here's what I, I would happily drink blood. I would rather, (laughs) sorry. That's Freudian slip. I'm a vampire. (laughs) Guys, I've been cast in Morbius 2, still Morbin. Uh, No. Uh, 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 I, I would happily give my blood for someone to drink so that they wouldn't uh, prey on human beings. Can I have it? Yes. <laughs> I would, June, I, pint after pint Thank you. for you. Absolutely. Thank you. My favorite part, ab- in the, so the part where he does wild out the first time he's transformed into a vampire and he's on the ceiling in the boat, in his cage, and then they open it and he comes down and he kills all the mercenaries, right? Then he wakes up out of it like, oh, 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 whoa, oh, oh. And he's like, what happened here? Amnesia. So he goes and he checks all the security footage, right? Of every, he's watching the security cam footage of everything we just saw and vomits. Even Morbius doesn't like the movie Morbius. <laughs> Even Morbius is watching the scenes we watched and is like, bleh, 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 this is not good. I want to just get into Tyrese, his character, because these two <laughs> cops, uh, and, and, I love, and I love Al Madrigal. He's like, great and, and he's in this. very funny in it, the and best. he's great. But... I know it's a movie convention, but I need to call out that they never have talked before they get to the crime scene. They are stone cold silent. Yep. And then they get there and it's like information dump. Like they, they, it seems like Tyree's like, don't tell me anything till I'm standing exactly in the center of they it. They also like, don't have a, they, I mean, I'm assuming they are long-term partners. They have no dynamic between nope. them. Nope. And they seem to also work San Francisco for Venom connecting the weirdo Sony Marvel well, universe. Do you think they worked well, San Francisco or they just think this might be connected to the thing that happened in San Francisco, AKA Venom? Oh, I thought like they were setting Tyrese up to be like a special investigator, which was confusing I like that. because when he has that earpiece, is he just getting 
the APB wire and is like, is I think like, it's like a, I think that's just for the rest of the police. I think, I, but I mean, is he getting every call? Because that, that I want to ask a nerd here. Is there a nerd who, who can, a singular person who can tell us, is Tyrese playing a character from comics that we should know? Yes. Who? He's playing a vampire hunter that ends up teaming up with him to kill Dracula. Okay, so he is playing a vampire hunter, not wow. Blade. Who wow. helps yep. Morbius By kill the way, Dracula? Should give it up for this this heroic Chicago native, guys, and and well done, everybody, that you allowed him to speak without everybody being like, I know, I know. Then I want to ask, why does Morbius refer to himself as Venom? Oh, is he not? Is that's he That's a joke. I think that's a misdirect. That's a joke. It's a joke because. By the way, I don't understand comedy. All right, when you watch the trailer, okay. No. So when you watch the trailer, one of the moments in the trailer is like, "Who are you?" And he's like, "I'm Venom." And then he goes, "That's just, in the trailer." Well, yes, and he goes, "Just joking. I'm Doctor Morbius." That's in the trailer. <laughs> they just left it here in the movie as. I'm Venom. And I think, does he maybe say I'm joking too? I didn't. No. I didn't okay. hear that. Well, definitely. I, in, I thought I have he was research. saying that as a way to be like, I'm, I don't, it was like throw people off the scent or, you know, like, uh, you know, like to be like, I'm not even going to identify myself. So I'm just going to say I'm this other character that has been causing trouble in the same world. Okay. So this, is the, line, this is the line as it was written. Um, he goes, I'm Venom. And he goes, just kidding. It's Dr. Morbius. At your service. <laughs> and actually, I misquoted it. He says... At your well, service? Well, I, I misquoted it. It says, I'm just kidding. It's Dr. Michael Morbius at your service. I'm sorry. I have it here, and I, it's actually at your cervix. <laughs> and it's like, it, he, it's like a joke. He's like making a joke. Dr. Michael Morbius at your cervix. I will say, I understand that this movie falls very weirdly in the MCU. In the MCU, I don't know where this falls because there are elements of, uh, you know, Spider-Man. There's, uh, like, we're referencing X-Men. There's a lot of stuff going on. But I will say the one thing that doesn't seem incredibly established in this universe, as is, are superheroes. Right? Like, mm. it doesn't seem like there's a lot of superheroes, but the lack of reaction to vampires mm. seems suspect. Like, take a look at this. This is a clip two. This is a news anchor just talking about a vampire attack. Breaking news on the Lower East Side where three people have been killed. Authorities have confirmed the discovery of three new bodies outside a bar popular with Wall Street traders. And like the victims before them, they were completely drained of their blood, earning the killer the moniker Vampire Murderer. The prime suspect, renowned scientist Dr. Michael Morbius, remains at large. So they're not saying it is a... They're saying the moniker van, the vampire killer so they're saying because the bodies are drained of blood the, the 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 serial killer must be draining their blood not that there is an actual vampire well then on they the go loose. it's a copycat vampire murderer but still draining of blood as well, i heard well, that, I, 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 the, i'm gonna i'm gonna put some more gravitas on that I, news report. I would think so also because the nurse who's i think already been killed at this point only has two fang marks yeah there are no other wounds, so that's concerning. Oh, you know that's yeah, gonna raise some yeah. eyebrows. By the the way, movie wants to have it both ways. The movie wants for people to be like, "Yeah, we live in a world where crazy shit happens." I.e., there's a Spider-Man, there's a Thanos, there's we live in like the we're a, we are in the MCU technically, sort of. It, we, are we nerd? Yes, because I can I can answer this nerd a little bit, and you can back me up. The illusion at the end when Michael Keaton appears is that he was also displaced from his universe when Doctor Strange pulled all the Spider-Men together. Uh, so that like, wasn't Batman? No. But... <laughs> no reason why you should you understand would, this. You have every right to think that. Yes. 
Because Michael Keaton has played both Batman, but also the Spider-Man villain, the Vulture. And Birdman. And Birdman. <laughs> and he is not... And Beetlejuice. He is not... <laughs> in this movie, he's Beetlejuice. He's not reprising his role what if, as Birdman in this movie. What if Morbius was like, uh, uh, fuck, I'm in trouble. Uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. <laughs> hey, hey there, Morbius. Hey, hey, what's going on? You gotta I help. Help. take a <laughs> shit. <laughs> Gotta drink that blood. So That's I, my audition for the remake by the of way, Beetlejuice. By the way, there's a great line for Beetlejuice. Uh, that your cervix. <laughs> yes! <laughs> See? I am now writing a Beetlejuice reboot. Okay. Uh, but yes, he's, he, that character is the Spider-Man vulture villain who appears a, at the end of the movie. That is... And so, okay. uh, so he is tied loosely because the same little thing happens in the, the skyline of New York that happens when Doctor Strange is... And it's also why Venom, at the end of Venom, there is right. a similar dis uh, multiversal displacement of people. And again, I will say it, like I said at the beginning, this is not a Marvel movie. It says in association with Marvel. They really, it's like Feige's like, oh, I really don't want you to take Spider-Man, but legally I can't say no, okay. <laughs> hey, yay, hey, hey. It's like, like... To see a Sinister Six film under this... Oh, God. It would be so <laughs> upsetting. Why would we destroy it? Let me ask you a question, cat people. Do you shake a litter box and cat cum? <laughs> right, as though, like, the food's in there. Yeah. Here, kitty, kitty. I don't... Like, it's like, why would the cat come running to its well, wait toilet? Wait, wait. When you were when you were potty training your children, didn't you do the handle -a -ling -a -ling -a -ling -a -ling -ling? <laughs> to create a Pavlovian response that is like, well, I guess it's time to shit, so let's do this. Now, Paul and Jason, I have an announcement. Yes. Um, okay. I have to go morb right now. <laughs> uh, it's 8.25. Yes. I have a 9.56 flight out of Chicago. <laughs> so I am, I didn't want to, we didn't want to reveal too early. I'm leaving the show a bit early because I, I know, and I'm so upset about it. I can't believe it. It's horrifying. But let me tell you this. I have to get a child ready in a pig Minecraft costume tomorrow. <laughs> and... As hard, thank you, as hard as it is to leave here to go do that, I truly must go. And when we planned this, we didn't want to have to reschedule Chicago again. And we knew yeah. it was the night before Halloween. I'm so sorry to leave. I love you all. I got a morb. And this is... I got a morb. Give it up for June. I'm so sorry. I got a morb. I'm so sorry. June. So, yes, so the show is going to continue. We have a lot more to get through. I will say this. Um, before, maybe I was a little hard on Matt Smith. I did like the bromance that they had. Like, when they were walking around, I was like, oh, now you're quoting the, uh, the notebook to me. Like, you know, I felt like they... No, I no, liked I liked vibe. them as friends. I liked yeah. them as friends. And if anything, I wanted more... I guess I wanted to understand more what their... What, what they had, like, why they were kind of brothers, you know? It really didn't make sense to me that Matt Smith was so connected to him still because kid Jared Leto leaves to go and do his whatever. Yeah. He becomes a, 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 you know, a Nobel winning blah, blah, blah. And Matt Smith just seems to still be, like, around. Can and I ask I, another question about yeah. this? Is that house that they're living in, that estate... Um, in Greece? In Greece. Yeah. Is that all full of kids with the exact same disease? Is it like a leper colony for that disease? I don't... And if so, why is he so committed to this one kid when you would imagine there's floors and floors of them? Unclear. And, and, and not only that, but if we're meant to believe uh, uh, the kid, kid Morbius' uh, uh, lines, multiple kids are just dying. Like, yeah. just, just expiring. So... So he's taken on, there was, there's an element of this movie which could have been like, I've watched so many people die that I'm not going to attach myself to you, Lucian. I'm going to call you Milo. You are a disposable person. And, but then he 
connects with him. He takes care of him. He becomes an older right. brother to him or whatever. But no, that's not what happens. The, the very next moment, uh, Jared Harris is like, we're sending you out of here. You're too smart. And he's like, see you later. And by the way. And look, then the kid gets his ass kicked. But then later they're like, you're my brother. Hey, here's what I, this is why I call bullshit on it. Because uh, 25 years ago, there was no internet. How was he keeping in touch with him? I just feel like I have a lot of friends I would like to see from Origami sixth grade. notes. Ah. Uh. The oh, only way you way, can get in touch. That's how they find him. We found one of these on the boat. Yeah. Shit. Like, it was like, all right, I guess. Oh, my gosh. Um, the fact that he flies like a squirrel jumper, is that what it's called? Like, people that like are Like a flying squir squirrel suit? Yeah, 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 like, that's what he looks like. It looks like he's in a flying squirrel suit. It doesn't look cool. Like, and I don't understand why he would need to fly when he can just jump with the same amount of, well, like... why not just let him fly? Why not just let him just... Or turn into a... Or maybe his powers don't... Maybe... Nerd, does he not turn into a bat? No. no. Thank you. Does he have control of bats? Oh, why doesn't Matt... Okay, Matt Smith is attacked by bats, and he's like, bats now like me because I'm the bats brother. Not Batman, but I'm the bat brother. But then the bats hate Matt Smith. Why isn't Matt Smith having the exact same experience with the bats. as Morbius? Yeah. With the bats, with flying, yeah. with the rest. Like Morbius, well, I think the living Matt vampire, seems fly. to have... What? I think Matt Smith can fly. Oh, he when, can? When they're in that subway fight scene, which... Um, I mean... There are so many people... That's the thing. There's so many people in the movie, in the subway tunnel, in the subway station, in the, on the city streets, that are watching this fight happen, and everybody's like, oh, no, look out. It's, it's so casual. They're, like, walking through the subway tunnel, and they're, like, flying up and around. It's like, and, I'm, and it's, like, testament to New Yorkers who are just like, gotta go to work, who gotta cares? Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, go, okay. go. Okay, what, two living vampires fighting around me? Gotta go to work. Like, the thing that bums me out the most about this movie is that Matt Smith just wears a nice suit all the time. And oh, yeah, yeah he, looks, he looks like he doesn't take on a real different personality. He just is like, well, I'll wear a button-down shirt. Can I ask the nerd a question? Okay, and uh, you know what? Yeah. Nerd, what's your name? Michael? Michael. <laughs> ba -ba -ba -ba. Michael the Are nerd. you Michael Morbius? You have to answer truthfully. He's um, at your service. No, my question for you, um, Michael, is, is Matt Smith playing a character from the Marvel Universe? He's playing kind of an amalgamation of two different characters. A mashup, right? Okay, so he's not, like, it's not a direct one-to-one -one rev. He's not a villain in the, in the Marvel Universe. Thank you, that's all I wanted so, to know. Should so I much be... so that Matt Smith said this. It's I Mormon was, time? <laughs> he goes, I was somewhat confused with my character's history as he wasn't aware how Milo tied into The Hunger's greatest legacy and origins from the comics. Since it wasn't clarified in the script, uh, many reports came from the set that he was like, uh, his character was named Locious Crown, uh, but then they changed it to Milo because they had to reshoot the movie. They also thought that that character of uh, Locius was a character in the film or in the comics. They decided to change it at the last minute. Anyway, they didn't keep the character's name. It, no, it just oh, is that why they changed it from Lucian to Milo? Because it was based on a character well, named... Well, his name was, L I guess, Loxius, L-O-X-I-A-S, Crown. Then they changed it to Lucian Crown, and then Milo. So three name changes <laughs> for one script. And, and none of it helps clarify who the character is at all. And it, it seems to me, according to Matt Smith, no one told him, like, hey, in the comics, you are this character. Like, and what was, what was, I think, one of the movie's most egregious problems was, other than just kind of being mad at the people who, at a world that kind of bullied him or tormented him or didn't make his life easy, he's just going to chomp everybody. In realistic sense, as a villain, as a villain in a superhero story, because that's, even though this is a vampire story, this is ultimately a superhero story, there is no clear villain's motive. He doesn't want to do anything but dance. And, and kill people. And flirt with girls. And kill, 
he, he, he wants to kill people because but he only they, seems to kill people when it's like presented when he's when he's slighted or what or when somebody but by the way he's an attractive man at a bar and he starts hitting on some other guy's girlfriend he's like hey that's my girlfriend and he's like i'll kill you and then does and then, and does. then does like that guy he might be a dick but it was his girlfriend he all he said was like her drinks are spoken for him. Also, when he kills, when he kills the nurse in, um, is it New Horizons? Is it Horizons? Horizons, it yeah. When he kills the nurse at Horizons, like, what a dick move to be like, hey, this this woman that you, my brother, Michael Morbius, a uh, Nobel Prize winner, doctor, this, her doctor, Michael Morbius, uh, at your cervix, that this that you. <laughs> This person that you work with intimately, I, her life matters nothing to me. I'm going to chomp her and, and drain her of all the blood. He is a dick, but I don't know why. And the, my problem was I don't know what his, he has no plan. He has no, he has no want no, he has, other than he, to dance. He seems like he could live a fine life, but now that he's a vampire, he's like, fuck it, I'll be evil. And we see the ultimate evil when he rips down the warning tape. When he leaves the lab, ooh, the villain. <laughs> Warning tape doesn't mean anything to me. I loved, but. I loved when he, when he, uh, when he, when he pretends to be the lawyer to visit Jared Leto in prison. Jared Leto is already is in prison. Boom, yeah. he's like in there, and he's like, ah, it leaves him some blood, and then leaves his cane behind, and then he's like walking out of the prison like, doop a doop a doop a doop a doop a doop a doop. It's like a Kaiser Soze thing, but for no one. Yeah. Like, because... It's for the camera. It's That's what I mean. Camera. It's for the camera. The movie... Because he's like this. He's like, lamp, lamp that. Oh, say that. Hey, 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 no more lamp. But why, who was the, the fake lamp for? <laughs> and why would they let him into the cell? And then why would they let him give him stuff? How, like, do, how do Tyrese and Al Madrigal not know that... Um, that uh, Matt Smith has visited him in jail. Why don't they know about him? Why they find out so late I mean, that there's another vampire? Why do they vampire? even arrest him? It's like he gets in jail to get immediately out. Like he fucking morbs in the interrogation. Why not like, morb? Ugh. Yeah, why not? Yes, they don't even. They are so unimpressed by the fact that they're in the presence of a vampire. <laughs> True. Like they are like, huh? Okay, I, we're gonna come back to this. I also. And again, this movie is not sure about powers or anything because there is also a moment when <laughs> Dr. Michael Morbius is trying to go to see Jared Harris. He's like, uh, come, I'm wounded. Oh, man, Jared Harris, <laughs> I, I Jared think Harris. this is true, and I didn't look it up. Jared Harris dies grisly deaths in every role he has. He's never survived to the end of a movie or TV show, period. Oh, Michael... Come to the apartment. Why? Just tell me now what's going on. Like, I, there was no I, tried, I tried to talk to Milo. I know his name is uh, Lucius, uh, but oh, we, you've decided to call him Milo and we're all under your thrall. When you were a bully, you renamed him and we all went with it. Uh, and even me, an adult, even me, an adult, uh, even though I've uh, not aged in 25 years, and you are now Jared Leto, and we are essentially the same age. Oh. There, there is a, there, so when he goes to visit dying Jared Harris, Morbius... Who, he is the same! Morbius, he has not changed! And Morbius is like this, like, creep sidestepping. It's like, dude, if you have echolocation, you know what's in the fucking yeah. room. You don't well, need to be like, ooh, I don't know. Someone going to jump out at me? It's his, like, his powers are so fickle, because, like, when um, uh, Matt Smith... Has um what what what's Bix, Bix from Andor's name in uh, the movie? Uh, 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 Martin. Martin. When he's got Martin and he's like, he'll come for you or what? He's 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 kind of trying to get to Martin to lure Morbius to him, and Morbius can hear everything up until the point where he kills Martin. Yep. And I was like, why didn't you go rescue her? He listens to the whole thing mm, happen. Like maybe it won't happen. And the look maybe, on Jared Leto's uh... face is like, I wonder what's gonna happen next. But then he makes her into a vampire. Do we get a post credit scene with her? Nope. Does, is that what happens? Yeah, Does she, she become she's a vampire? Like, bam, bam. Is and that the way, uh, Michael the Nerd? Is 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 she playing a vampire character? Yes. Who? She's uh, she's basically Celine in the comics. They changed the so many times the energy vampire from X Men. 
Okay, so she's okay. the energy vampire from the X-Men. Great. Um, okay, great. I will I love say that. this. Thank you. I, I liked her performance. And, I and, thought and, that... and by the way, give it up for give it up for Michael. We need Michael to do. doing heroic work all show long. Everybody give him a pat on the back on the way out. Don't touch him though. Um, Don't touch anybody. Don't touch each other. I will say this. I liked her performance. I thought the love story was bullshit, but um, I that when he said they are just he he's a vampire. They're t- she's freaked out. They don't know what's going on. They go up to the roof. He goes, close your eyes, and then kisses her. That, I didn't think that was cool. I, I thought when he goes, hey, I, I wasn't gonna morb out on you, and she's like, I thought it was romantic. Did you? This man turned into a fucking creature, and you're you're like, ooh. Cool. I thought they were gonna stone cold fridge her in a way that I yeah. was like, wait, are they killing her now just to motivate him to get back at Matt Smith? And I didn't like that. But then they instead just turn her into a vampire. I guess. Well, they needed something to activate Matt Smith and uh, <laughs> and Doctor Morbius to fall through. The, I, the, the earth? earth? I, yeah. They fight into the center of the earth? Are they falling down the middle of a, a building? In, I'm so confused. It was like I was watching the end of Transformers 1. I was and like, is it just I so that know, they can, Is it just so that they can get to a level where there are bats? Also, aye, aye, aye. also Morbius seems to have, or obviously has a relationship with bats, right? We get that. Vampire bats, where does he go at the beginning? Where is he in the caverns at uh, the beginning? What, okay, hold on a second. Michael, where does he go in the beginning? Costa Rica. Costa Rica. He's in Costa Rica studying vampire bats. Do we think there are vampire bats in New York City? No. These are just some basic these ass are bats. Re- this, is, these are reg- this is like Ant Man getting the ants to play like, the drums. But like, any got, ants? Yeah. Any ants can do that. Ant Man has those powers. He could get everybody doing So all- he can control any bat anywhere. No, no, no. The bats are his friends. He's like, guys, help, guys, I'm being ch- captured. And then the bats are, oh, shit, our brother. And they all... I guess, I, guess, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. But then, boy, would I like it if he could turn into a bat. Or something. Uh, well, just, he's kind of flying. I mean, his bones are hollow. We know also, that. why didn't he... Why? Why? <laughs> uh, the, the idea that you thought... And he gets he shot up at the ah, hollow bones. He gets, he gets hollow bones is incredible. So do you think Superman's bones are hollow? No. He's not a he's not a bat. So anybody so it's not just anybody who can fly no, no, has no, no. hollow bones. It, only that he's a bat, he has hollow bones. Got it, got it. Or a bird, but he's not a bird man. And Birdman in the movie is not do you an think actual Hawkman, DC. Uh, Justice League member Hawkman and Hawk Girl, do they have ho- hollow bones? No, because their planet, they don't have hollow bones. Okay. <laughs> well, okay, so this is the one thing that Martine said about her character, which I thought was odd. She said she based it on AOC. <laughs> which, I love AOC, great, but it's also a weird, like, why? How? Where is that evidence? I don't see that at all like i don't see she's just a scientist like she's not i don't see she's not a she's not a politician she's, she's not, not advocating i, for I any, would like my i have follow-up questions yeah i do too it seems like an odd choice to be like oh yeah yeah no aoc is how i i viewed that martine <laughs> I, what part i don't know i want to get deeper into what she was talking about i i want to get into it with the audience because i know that you oh. all have questions and I'm going to go out here to the crowd. I'm going to talk to you. Okay, your name and your question. My name's Adrian, and my question is, if this movie's present day, uh, that puts them in the ch- children's hospital 25 years ago in Greece. Why do they shoot it like it's post-war England? Yeah, that car that pulled up was odd and old, right? It, did, it seemed like a Model T. Here, We grab get it, things. Adrian. Greece doesn't have modern cars. Oh, well, I'm sorry that Greece well, can't have enough cool cars. Well, all their cars run on feta cheese, right? What? Saganaki, I said all their cars run on Saganaki, right? You just like... Yes. Yes. That, you know, oh, it's, 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 a, it's a new fuel in Greece. It's just, it's, it's cooked cheese. Um, okay, yes. You have your notebook out. You have a question. Yes. Okay, go for it. My name is Laura. Why would you lose your license for combining human, de- human DNA with bat DNA? 
And once you've combined human DNA and bat DNA, why would you give it to a mouse, which is neither a human <laughs> or a... Now that's a question here. Get two pieces of candy for that. The movie does a lot of bullshit like that, where it's like, we know that you, the audience, understand that medical tests are done on mice. So we're just going to do that, even though it doesn't make any sense to the movie we're doing or what's happening. So fuck you. The movie is caught. Here's what the reality. The movie, if you watch it again, please don't. The movie is constantly saying to you, the audience, you're a fucking idiot. You're a fucking idiot. I'm not even going to help you understand. I'm just going to show you a bunch of garbage. And you're going to have to be like, I guess I like it, Jared Leto. Uh, obviously, we had opinions about this movie, but there are people out there with a different opinion. It is now time for Second Opinions. Oh, I really want to fight somebody. I kind of want to fight with somebody. Why doesn't Matt Smith like me? I need a second opinion. Amazing. Great job. Give it up. Uh, here's what I got. I got some second opinions from Amazon. Here we go. There are um, 39,000 reviews. I don't think that's right. <laughs> Does seem odd. Molly Reynolds, uh, one of our producers, put this together. 39,000. But it does seem like because of the internet memification of it, maybe it's true. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Is that just because it became such a... I think like it might a, have been, a, yeah. 55% are five-star reviews. Here we go. Kate Pugh writes, remember when there was a good old horror movie on every Saturday night? No. And you and your friends would curl up in the family or living room with bowls of popcorn and potato chips just waiting to be scared? Guess what? They're back. They're back? Yep. This is one of a new generation of horror movies. Not the classic Frankenstein Dracula, The Wolfman, plus the myriad of sequels and sci-fi outer space Japanese monsters. Nor is it the slasher gore everywhere, Friday the 13th, Elm Street, losing your lunch type that was prevalent a few years ago. This is a good, straightforward horror movie. Worth the cost. Well, you'll remember it, but you won't have any trouble going upstairs afterwards. Five stars. The title of the review, fast shipping and quick handling. That, you know what's disappointing is, and, that, and, and I hadn't even really thought about this, but... Wouldn't this movie would have been so much better if it was a horror movie, or if it was, I think it was if it leaned to be. into being a horror yeah. movie? I'm, I know it was horror in in some senses, but yeah. like like the Marvel, um, the, what was it, the Werewolf by Night, Marvel yeah. Presents, Amazing. or right. whatever that was. Werewolf by Night, which is on Disney Plus right now, is a Marvel horror special, and that was I thought fantastic, and totally got what this sh this movie kind of missed. A hundred percent, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll end it on this one from Baby Doo Doo. <laughs> who oh, says, really? oh, really? You're going to end it with Baby Doo Doo? Baby Doo Doo says... Is it this, this is... baby's Doo Doo? <laughs> Maybe. This baby's so cute. So cute. And you said it's COVID-free, so I want to hold it, which Don't is bad. Don't fall into that trap, Jason. I fell into this trap before, and I got bit. <laughs> baby Doo Doo writes, this is a movie I watched ten times before my rental ended a 48 hours. <laughs> Worth the time. I am a serial killer. <laughs> Worth the time and money. I have watched almost every vampire movie and vampire series. A big fun of the Dracula character. However, Morbius is giving the best of both worlds. The ending gives the idea that there's a positive of Morbius becoming part of the Avengers. It creates the biggest expectation of Morbius. I commend the writer for a meaningful storyline, as well as the producers and actors that brought it to life. Double thumbs up. Incredible. Well, but thumbs, here's the thumbs up is double, not thumb up. Yeah. You never say thumb up. What's great? And that makes no. If and the you're title gonna watch is it through the roof. If you're gonna watch it that much, buy the movie. You loved it by the movie. Here's right. what's crazy. Morbius the Living Vampire exists in the same cinematic universe, and Michael the Nerd, correct me if I'm wrong, as Man Bat? Or is Man Bat DC? DC. Okay, thank you. 
thank you. Okay, disregard. <laughs> oh, right. I, I was actually thinking this whole time that Batman was the, in the, the Morbius. The x-ray really rattled me. I was thinking that Batman was in this universe, but he's not because I just think of this as like a shitty DC movie, but it's a Marvel movie. Well, and Again, that's yeah. the thing is this feels like it's more of a DC movie than it is a Marvel movie. Yes. Like, and as does Venom, frankly. And I, Venom 2. Dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is written by our friend. So when we announced that we were doing Morbius here in Chicago, I got an email. And the email said, I'm a huge fan of the podcast, a longtime listener, and I was a crew member on Morbius. My role kept me very close to the action. I can't tell you my name, but you can call me Bat on the Wall. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a Twix. Is that Please. okay? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> and here are the six points that Bat on the Wall writes. First up, Jared was method acting. This included acting very sickly and disabled during the first half of filming. For example, he used crutches to go to the bathroom, hobbling down the corridor at a snail's pace. Each toilet break would last 30 minutes, but it was a two-minute walk away. He also wouldn't come to set for five hours once because he hadn't found Dr. Morbius inside of him yet. I'm so nervous that I'm going to be on a job at some point and somebody's going to write an email to something like this and be like, Jason Manzukis spent so long having diarrhea in his trailer and that he didn't come out because he was nervous because he didn't have wipes for his butt. <laughs> Bat on the Wall continues and says that he also wore an earwig while filming... And his assistant... An earwig is an earpiece where they feed you your lines. Like the same thing that Tyrese had in his ear, uh, where he gets the police yeah, report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except, um, that, except that it's meant to... In Tyrese's, Tyrese isn't using it as an actor. His character is using it uh, for to hear the police action. Exactly. But this is, some, this is something so that some people need to have their lines fed to them. And some people who are big method actors, like even Marlon Brando liked having the earwig because it kept them that much more in the moment. If I don't know what I'm going to say, how can the, I be I, acting? Brando is, the. if you haven't seen it before, when you go home tonight, Google Marlon Brando um, uh, cue cards or something like that. There's a great photo of Marlon Brando on the set of The Godfather doing a scene, and Robert Duvall, the, the incomparable, the incredible Robert Duvall has a cue card hung around his body with Brando's lines on it. It's Jason, like this big. Jason, I have also worn a cue card for an actor I was working with. You wore a cue card? Multiple what? times. Huge Multiple reveal. times. Um, okay, point number two. Jared Leto constantly ad-libbed what he thought was hilarious dialogue, but was actually deeply unfunny and vaguely disturbing. Most takes would last 15 minutes, all just him solidly ad-libbing. It became such an issue that there were meetings with the studio to see if they could get anything from the scenes. Were they salvageable? The best slash worst day for this was a scene with Morbius and Martine flirting in the lab. There was a cat in there, and Jared kept on repeating weird lines like, that cat just shit in my mouth. You gotta yes and that. You gotta, you gotta yes and that. I'm yes, gonna, and I bet it tasted great. I'm going to roll that cat up like a little butt burrito. It, what? That's not a thing. Nope. Like a butt burrito is not a real thing. And finally, gravity always wins in the end. I guess that accounts for the pubic hair in my cake. Wait, is that a Clarence Thomas line? <laughs> That's going back. That's for the oldies in the room. That's for Gen X right there. 
Um, Matt Smith, cool person, great actor. Hope he got paid okay. <laughs> and then finally this. We shot a fight sequence for one and a half months. It was a huge fight between Morbius and Milo in Central Park, which was an English wood where they painted the bottom half of the trees bright red, and then we shot the rest in an English park that looked nothing like Central Park. I looked up the plot of the release movie, because I have not seen it, and the bats that help him defeat Milo did not exist in the original version. Morbius jabs the serum into Milo's heart when they are grappling midair, they fall to the ground in Central Park in an embrace. Then they also changed the Martine plot. It originally ended with Morbius and Martine flying off into the sky together while the cops watch. And that on the wall includes the script right here. So the, this is how the movie ends. Uh, Morbius says, I'm ready? Eat another twig. He holds out his hand. Martine takes it. Martine says, let's get out of here. Then, dot, 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 a big gust of wind blows through. Morbius says, wait for it, dot, 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 now. They leap into the air together, catching an updraft. The cops uh, are taken back by surprise. Uh, they train their weapons into the sky on Morbius and Martine, and Morbius says, easy guys, settle down. Credits. <laughs> and uh, Bat on the Wall wants us to know that all the after credit scenes were not shot in principal photography. So that okay, was all that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, this movie, uh, you know, got a 15% on the tomato meter, uh, but a 71% on the audience score. Uh, the budget was 83 million, the opening weekend was 39. The domestic gross is 73. The top movies of 2022 are Top Gun Maverick, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and Jurassic World Dominion. This movie did come in uh, 23 in the top 200 movies of uh, 2022. Uh, and it was beat by Moonfall. Moonfall made more money than... Fuck more the moon! Fuck the moon! Fuck the, the moon. moon! So that is that. The only other thing I want to add here that I think is interesting is that... Um, uh, Jared Leto also said that Pokemon was a big influence of course, on you the can portrayal see of Morbius's powers. Gotta get them all. And, um, and Jared Leto also said this, is, uh, this first movie is a first date. And, you know, we're just getting to know each other. This is kind of our first step forward. More of a first impression. Yeah. <laughs> I think if you look at Wolverine, if you look at Batman, you see a lot of these films evolve over time. You know, there's a relationship that develops there, and who knows? We'll see what happens. Who knows? I, I, I genuinely hope nothing happens. <laughs> Although I would love, I would happily take um, Matt Smith and Martine forward. Yeah. Um, those are characters I, I'm interested in. Well, Matt Smith is dead. Uh, is he? Is anybody dead in this I mean, world? I think you could say that anything I don't happened. Know. Yeah, we could really um, The woman all. who plays Martine, I think, is incredible. I've been referring to her as Bix from Andor because yes. she's fantastic in an incredible show. She was also in Father of the Bride, and yes. it, the, the remake of Father of the Bride, which is also incredible, and she's fantastic. And I've been calling her Bix from Andor the whole night, and I wanted to just say her name is Adria Arjuna. So yes. I, I, I wanted to shout that out. Amazing. And she's fantastic. Would you recommend this movie? Would I recommend this movie? Fuck yeah. It's even morbid though, time, baby. Even though I hated it, I would absolutely recommend it because exactly kind of what you and June said, it's very slick, it's good, it's like they do a good job even though it makes no sense. It's a pile of garbage and I don't care about any of this nonsense. Um, I will say this, that... This movie does pay off some dividends because I was watching it. June was about five minutes behind me, and occasionally I would get a little bit ahead of her, and I'd look back and be like, I don't remember that scene at all. <laughs> and she's only five minutes behind me, and there were things that I just straight up missed. And, like, yeah, and I was like, oh, it does pay off. There's more here. There's more. It's a, you know, it, there's a, there's... A lot going on, and I think you'll really... Well, there's really... a lot going on because we're watching Jared Leto. Oh, God. <laughs> we're watching Jared Leto turn into a living vampire who has a thirst for blood 
and spicy Cheetos? Like when he takes down the counterfeit ring, he's like, you know, get Eat out of here. Cheetos. You can take the money, but leave the spicy Cheetos. And I was like, is that what he's subsisting on? And we all on? know, Michael, that Morbius is a hot talkies guy. I, actually, Michael, is there anything that you would like to say? I'd like to say this. If I got anything wrong, please leave me alone online. <laughs> Don't attack Michael online. <laughs> poor, poor Michael. Poor Michael's like, hey, if I got anything wrong, don't troll me online. Thank you, Chicago. We will be back. We did it, Chicago. That's right. Thanks, everybody who wore costumes. Happy Halloween. Eat shit. Thank you for listening to this episode of How Did This Get Made? The conversation continues with some deleted scenes on next week's Last Looks. Also, Jason and I will sit down and talk about what we are watching, what we're into, and so much more. Last Looks is changing, and we want you to get on board. Plus, we're going to have an interview with director Jason Wolner in an upcoming episode. He directed the brand new amazing series on Peacock called Paul T. Goldman. If you're not watching, watch and then be able to catch up with our interview with him. Uh, if you want to check out what we're up to, well, you can check out June on social media. She's just June Diane Rayfield. You could also check out me on social media. I'm just Paul Shear. Jason, not on social media, but check out the giant show that we did on Twitch, me and Rob Hubel, and a lot of your How Did This Get Made favorites on my YouTube channel. Just go to my YouTube page and watch Celebrity Garage Sale. You'll see people like Rob Riggle, Nicole Byer, Lauren Lapkus, uh, Carl Tart, and so many more people. Just head on over to my YouTube page, and you can also be watching uh, select clips of How Did This Get Made there. It's a lot of fun. All right, we'll see you next week. And in the meantime, if you want to get yourself your merch, that's right, you want to get your Morbin merch, head on over to tpublic.com slash store slash HDTGM, and you'll see Morbin and more. I mean, that shirt sold out quick, but they're still there now. And a big thank you to our amazing team, our producers, Scott Sonny, Molly Reynolds, our engineer, Alex Gonzalez, welcome to the show, and our movie-picking producer, Avril Halley, and our publisher, July Diaz. We will be back with more How Did This Get Made next week for Last Looks. Bye for now.